7.45. Welcome back to our final segment on First Up. In this segment, we're happy to have our friends from the Unit Trust Corporation, and then Campbell Marketing Officer, Marketing and Communication Department, and also uh, for the first time, Simon Lampkin, Investment Center Manager, San Fernando Branch. Lady, good morning. Ladies, good morning. Thank you for joining us this morning. Thank you. Uh, and welcome, uh, Simon. First time you're here. All right, uh, let's we'll be focusing on, on kids and the importance of starting the habit, developing the habit from very early in teaching kids about uh, saving and investing. Let's start with you, Simone. Of course, it seems like a no-brainer, but sometimes we underestimate uh, how astute kids can be and how much we can gain by starting them young. Absolutely. Um, one of the things that we learn in financial planning is that uh, saving and investing is one of the concept, basic concepts. And uh, if we can teach our children that uh, from as early as children, it helps them to be more confident in terms of their investments and they go as investors as they grow up. And uh, we tend to think that they wouldn't understand, but all we have to do is make it simple for them and they can certainly take it forward from there. But we have to lead by example, don't we, Nilma? Always, always. <laughs> we can't tell them one thing and then we seem to be. Right. fighting with our finances right. at the end of right. the month or the middle of the month. That's, that's one of the main things that we, you know, that we always try to emphasize. You lead by example. Sometimes you say, um, do as I say, but not as I do. But children quite often look as, at us for, um, as adults to have an understanding of what they themselves should do. Um, before, before we go into, into that, I would like to say that it is, all, it is also important for them to understand the difference between saving and investing. Mm -hmm. Saving is generally for short-term needs, whereas investing is more for longer-term needs. How periods. do you get it into a child in terms of abstract thinking? And, well, and how early should we start trying to, to concretize those, those concepts in a child's mind? I would say from the time they understand that they can put a 25 cents into a penny bank. The reason for that is that they, from that very tender age, now develop that understanding that there are things that I can get now and there are things that I have to work towards. So the larger things, for example, if, if they are looking at getting something, maybe everybody now is into a phone. Even my little son asked me for an Android phone. He already knows of Android phones. So they understand that, okay, today I may be able to get a, a, a trip to the mall, mm -hmm. but then saving towards an Android phone is something totally different. That's, that's so a kind of investment. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. So they now understand that there's a way that you can work towards achieving that goal because children have goals of their own. Simon, how important? Go ahead. And just to add to what Nilma is saying, um, children have their goals. Uh, and uh, as Nilma said, they may have like an Android phone. But when we sit down and we sit down and we explain what is the concept, saving is really a short-term perspective. So we get them into the understanding that, hey, I'm going to have short-term goals. Uh, when we consider the term of investing, we're looking at more long-term needs. Uh, so okay, what am I as a child, can I look forward to down the road? Um, hey, what about saving for when I am finished with my tertiary education? Can I have a nest egg that I can utilize? Can you use the term nest egg and tertiary education to a seven, eight year old? How, how, how should we make sure and tailor our language that mm -hmm. is age appropriate because you use the term in, uh, tertiary education mm -hmm. and nest take to a child and they're like, okay, what's that? Well, my son, for example, that's Zwadi, and I would have been on the segment before speaking towards investment for children. Zwadi came home one day and asked me, mommy, is there a school that allows me when I'm finished to get a job, he wants to be a pilot. Mm -hmm. So I had to explain to him that you, we would first of all have to save towards um, getting the funds for you to go to that school, but we now have the, the service through the UTT that is facilitating aeronautical engineering. So you may be able to use that. But he was concerned about getting a job. So he understands that and at this age, he? he's eight. Wow. He's eight. <laughs> so he understands that. And he that already wants correct, in his mind to know correct. that I need to get a job. Correct. That's great. So he already has in his mind, and he, he wants a Bugatti car. Right? A so, Bugatti. He, so he knows what he Not wants. Not a Toyota. No, yes. <laughs> Not a BMW. And, and a Ferrari. A Bugatti so and a Ferrari. He has very large. Ambitious young man. Uh, very, very ambitious. Mm -hmm. So, with that, I have to already start showing him listen, you have your children investment startup plan account. That's one of the investments we have for children. And he, any money he gets goes into that. Money that goes into any bank he will think about spending for little things. Mm -hmm. But he already has al already learned to separate. Uh, Simon, how important is that tying? Because children speak to you all the time. 
mommy and daddy, I want X. Mommy and daddy, I want to be a pilot. Mommy and daddy, I want to be a doctor. How important is when they make these statements, you show that kind of support by tying in all the dreams, the little hopes and aspirations to that investment and you, and, and, and make sure the child understands that you have the power to start focusing and, and preparing for that from as early as seven, eight, nine, five, six. And just to continue off on the example that Nilma's son is wanting to be a pilot, when we decide that we want to be something in life, uh, what's the purpose of saying that? It's because we want to have a good lifestyle, we want to live, we want to have a good car, we want to have a nice home, and we want to achieve some of the things that probably mommy and daddy were not able to achieve in their lifetime. So we have conversations with them. Go to the supermarket, track the items, track and see what is the price of a, of a tin of peas as you go along. Look at the price of cars. I would have bought a car, $50,000. But what is the price of a car today? So when they see that with time, the value of things, the price of, of um, items go up, we explain to them the concept of inflation, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the things with inflation we know is that it erodes the purchasing power of our dollar. No. I can't say, well, you know, it's going to erode the purchasing power of the dollar for a child. But certainly I can tell them, if you are looking to have something down the road, the earlier you start, the better the returns because will be for you. Because it's going to cost more down the road. Absolutely, Correct. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let, let's talk about involving them also now in, in addition to piggy bank saving and looking forward to having a bigger piggy bank, for, which is the investment piggy mm -hmm. bank, and a smaller piggy bank, yes. which is the saving piggy bank. Yes. The, the concept of going to the financial institution with their parents so they start that habit also and All start right. the interface with agents like yourselves. Nema. Okay. That um, is a practice that is extremely healthy in terms of developing a saving and investment culture in your child. Taking the child along with you now at Unitrust Corporation, um, because we are an investment company, the account is generally open in the name of the parent for the child. But in so doing, you take the child along with you so they have that experience of what it means to deposit your funds into an investment. And as the time go along, you get statements on a regular basis. You show them how the investment is growing and that will give them the, the impetus to continue and even in so doing to encourage them as well when the, child, when the child saves maybe whether it's from their allowance or they come into extra cash because we have ourselves as adults you come into unexpected money be it a raise of pay or a, a bonus payment or something the grandparent gives you a, a, an extra hundred dollars or so on and they now use what we call the one third one third one third principle you save one third, you invest one third, you spend one third. So it gives them the understanding of separating and seeing that investment grow over time. You know, you allow the child to, to you know, develop prudent investment principles. And they, and they start to understand proportion and, 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 and long term. Yes. Simone, let's talk about the, the types of instruments that, that can apply to children, even, even in utero, while they're in the womb. Uh, a parent can certainly say, OK, um, we're pregnant. Uh, this child is going to be born in nine months, he's going to be two in two years, and etc. What types of instruments we can start putting in place? Because as, we, as Unitrust always suggests, planning ahead is, is critical. Absolutely. And uh, we can certainly do that. We have two products um, that you can use, the proceeds of which are invested in our growth and income fund. Uh, we have the Children Investment Starter Plan, and we also have the Student Investment Protection Plan. Both are vehicles that parents or even grandparents can utilize, certainly for gifts of units. Um, we have for christenings, lots of parents, lots of godparents will come in and purchase on behalf of their children. And these investments hedge against that what we call inflation. It helps against inflation as well as it allows you for your capital to increase and grow with time. Yeah. Right? So once you are able, you come in. And of course, it's very easy to open an account with us. You come in with IDs, and we can open an account certainly for you and the child. At what age can the child start going to the UTC themselves? Teenager, uh, 18, let's clarify that, Nilma. 18. Uh, At 18 years As old. I said before, the accounts are open in the name of the parent mm -hmm. for the child until the child is 18. The parent then makes that decision. But if, if I'm a 16-year-old, this is a pretty savvy and yes, sophisticated. Correct. If I have 200 and I'm, and I'm 16 years old, they can although it's in the, the name, account in, in the the name of my parent, I can go and deposit. And make the deposit to the account the because I, the parent can provide you with yeah, the account number. But the withdrawal, not so much. No. We want some no. level of control. Correct. Right. But you can start getting that independence correct. in terms of deposits. Yes. It correct. also allows them to 
to see what they are doing and to see the benefits because when they get their statements, they can look at their statement, their present statement as opposed to their past statement and they can see how their investment is proceeding mm -hmm. and it gives them that encouragement to continue. What we have to remember is that what we're trying to instill in our children are good habits yeah. and managing our financial affairs. Um, we, can, we know that that tends to have a little bit of a challenge for most of us and if we can start with our future generation inculcating that habit, that discipline, certainly it will all go well for them and for the country as it well. It doesn't make any difference what socioeconomic group you're in. No. And, and for parents now, in, in our last two minutes, looking at instruments to invest in their children aside from the child themselves. Let's just deal with that quickly, Nilma. Okay, we, as I said before, we have the two accounts. So those investments allow you the opportunity to to invest in a particular way. If you use a children investment starter plan, for example, that allows you to utilize the funds in stages for the child. The child goes through five years, you start investing, you utilize the funds for primary school, then they go on to secondary school, the account goes for another five years, you utilize the funds. The student investment and protection plan now, which gives you investment for the child as well as insurance coverage, which is accidental medical and dental coverage, that allows for you to save for the child for a longer period until that child is 18 or until, they, until 23 if they go on to tertiary education. So with that investment, you have now what we would call the nest egg for want of a better term mm -hmm. uh, for the child when they are finished with secondary school. If they don't want to go into tertiary education, you have money to start a business or towards uh, their first home, that kind of but thing. The important thing is you have options. You have options. Because Absolutely. you are proactive. Yes, Absolutely. correct. Once again, yes. no matter what you make, you can always save and invest. Yes. Absolutely. Ladies, thank you so much for being with us. Uh, once again, you can get more information at ttutc.com. I always say, oh, ttutc.com. <laughs> uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, Nilma Campbell, who is the marketing uh, and communications, who works in the marketing and the communications department as a marketing officer. And Simone Lamkin, uh, Investment Center Manager, San Fernando Branch, please feel free to go into the Unit Trust Corporation and they can call them at 657-8648 and 624-8648. All right, we want to thank the Unitrust Corporation for, of course, sponsoring this segment to keep you updated on your financial options at UTC, ttutc.org. That's our show for today. Don't forget, join Disha Rambachan, James Saunders, and Ian Wallace tonight. Uh, the C-News Comprehensive Newscast at 7 o'clock and Scandal, prime time, 8 o'clock. Have a great day on behalf of the entire team.